When designing wireless communication systems, there are many variables that have unknown values, and we would like to learn those values. And that is where estimation theory comes very handy. And some variables are easy to learn, and some are harder to learn, and then we need to care about the estimation errors. And I will talk about that in this video. In particular, we will talk about the minimum mean squared error estimator. And I will exemplify its behaviors when we are estimating a Gaussian random variable, or its realization, in Gaussian measurement noise. The essence of estimation theory is that there exists an unknown variable that has some value g. And we would like to learn what that value is. And we cannot observe this variable directly, but there is some kind of observation y that we can obtain, and it's somehow connected to the unknown variable. And there are two categories of estimation theory. In classical estimation theory, g is deterministic but unknown, so it has a constant value forever. While in Bayesian estimation, g is a realization of a random variable. So it's both unknown and it can change over time. In wireless communications, we're typically transmitting long data packets. So we can utilize the channel capacity as our performance metric. And that means that it's easy to estimate deterministic variables, like in classical estimation, because we can take a small part of our packet and use it to send signals that allows us to make observations that we can use to estimate. And when the packet grows large, well, the size that we need to allocate in order to estimate this deterministic variable will be negligibly small. The challenge is to estimate the realization of random variables when those are varying with time. Then during our transmission of a long block, we will get new realizations over time. And then for each realization, we can only assign a small part of the packet to obtain observations that allows us to estimate the channel. So for that reason, in wireless communications, it's particularly patient estimation that is of interest. And that is what I will be considering here. That means that Bayesian estimation will be the focus of this video. That doesn't mean that classical estimation is something that is unnecessary. On the contrary, we need to utilize all kinds of estimation theory to learn all the parameters that we need. It just means that those variables can be estimated essentially without error because they are fixed forever. So what we are considering is Bayesian estimation. And the principle here is that there is an unknown variable, g, and I will consider it to be a complex variable. There is an observation y. Here I've written as a scalar. It could also be a vector. And then there is some kind of connection between them determined by a conditional probability density function. So this is the probability density function, or PDF, of g when we have observed a realization of y. So based on observation of y, how will g be distributed? And the goal of estimation is to find a function that we call g hat, same variable, but with hat showing that it's an estimate. And this is a function that takes our observation and produces a guess of what g should be. There is a variety of ways that one can select this function, but what we would like to figure out is the best way of selecting it. And how should we measure the estimation quality? Well, we typically consider the mean squared error, or MSE. So this is what we get when we take the unknown variable, we subtract the estimate that we have selected. This difference is representing the estimation error. We take the absolute value square, so we get the squared error, and then we compute the mean of it uh, over different realizations of g. The mean squared error is essentially the variance of the estimation error. And we would like to make that variance as small as possible. And the estimator that is doing that is called the minimum MSE or MMSE estimator. One can show mathematically that the conditional mean here, so the expected value of g given the realization of y that we have observed, is the function that is minimizing the MSE. And the conditional mean is computed using this conditional PDF like this. I think this result makes intuitive sense because when we have made a certain observation, there are different values of this unknown variable that could have produced this observation. And among all of those ones, we are considering how likely they are, and then we are computing the average value like this. I will now give an example of how we can compute the MMSE estimate for a wireless communication problem. So suppose we have this communication channel here. 
we have a signal X that is transmitted over a channel, is multiplied with the channel response G. We add independent Gaussian noise, which have a variance N0. And what we receive is Y, which is equal to X times G plus N, which was the noise. Our goal here is to estimate the value of G. And to do that using Bayesian estimation, we need to assign a prior distribution to G. And we are assuming here that it's a realization of a complex Gaussian distribution with ceramine and variance that we will call beta. So G is the unknown variable, and what we observe is Y, which is G times X plus N. And in order to be able to estimate G, we need to deal with X here. X is something that we are transmitting, and we will assume that we are transmitting a known signal. We can choose a deterministic number, and we call this often a pilot signal when we are transmitting over a channel. That means that X is known, G is unknown, and N is also an unknown noise term. The thing that makes the estimation challenging is the fact that we are observing a scaled version of the variable G in measurement noise. For the observation Y, we can characterize its properties. We can look at this marginal distribution. We know that Y is a summation of G, which is complex Gaussian, N, which is complex Gaussian. They are assumed to be independent. So Y will be complex Gaussian, have zero mean, just as the two variables. And we are summing up the variances. Beta times the absolute value square of X. This is a scaling that X is providing us with. And N naught, which is the variance of the noise. It is also easy to characterize the distribution of y when g is known. So in that case, we can subtract g times x because x is known, g is known. What is left here is only the noise. So y minus g times x is just the noise, which is complex Gaussian distribution with n0 as its variance. So this tells us something about the conditional distribution of y when g is known. But in order to compute the MMSC estimate, we need to know the opposite the conditional distribution of G given Y, because Y is what we are observing. And we can obtain that conditional distribution based on what we already know. So we have the unknown variable, we have the observation, and there is a connection between them, and that is a connection determined by the statistics. The joint probability density function of two random variables can be written as this, joint PDF here of G and Y and it can be divided up into two different parts. One is the conditional PDF of G given Y multiplied with the marginal PDF of Y. We can also write it in the opposite order, the conditional PDF of Y given G, and that is multiplied with the marginal PDF of G. Based on the equality between these two last terms, we can get what is known as the Bayes theorem. We are dividing both terms here with the PDF of Y, we are then getting that the conditional PDF of G, the unknown variable, given the observation Y, is equal to the conditional PDF of the observation, given the unknown, multiply with the marginal PDF of the unknown, divided with the marginal PDF of the observation. We can use this directly in our example. So the unknown G is complex Gaussian distributed, so it has this probability density function, and beta was its variance. And the PDF of Y, well, that was the sum of the variances of the unknown variable multiplied with X and the noise. So here is its PDF. It's a Gaussian distributed as well. Here is the variance. Here is Y. And then for the conditional PDF of Y given G, we said that if we take Y, we subtract X times J, then we only have the noise left. So we have something that's complex Gaussian distributed and have variance and not. And that is what I've written the PDF for here. So this is the conditional PDF of G given Y, and we can rewrite it so that we are gathering all the terms contained in G at just one location over here. It takes some algebra to reach this point, but the expression that you get contains G minus an expression that contains Y and the statistics, and it's divided with the term here that is appearing twice, and you can recognize that this looks very much as the PDF of a Gaussian distribution. That means that G minus this term will be complex Gaussian distributed, have zero mean, and this will be its variance. So now we have all that we need in order to compute the MMC estimate of this Gaussian variable G in Gaussian noise, when we have multiplied with the constant signal X that is known. And remember, this were the marginal distribution that we're having. Remember that the MMC estimator is the conditional mean of G given Y. And here we see that G minus this expression have zero mean, 
which means that this is the expression that we should use. That is the conditional mean. And the resulting mean squared error, that should be the variance of the randomness around this term, which is this variance here. So looking more closely at the MMZ estimator, what we are doing is that we are taking our observation y and we are scaling it based on the term here. We are dividing with this, which was the variance of y, and we are then scaling it again using the variance of beta and x conjugate. So while it's impossible for us to remove the noise, we can at least take our observation and scale it properly so that we get something that is as close as possible to the actual realization of g in mean squared error sets. And the MSC that we are getting looks like this. It contains the product of the variances of the unknown and the noise in the numerator. And in the denominator, it once again contains the variance of y. And we can see that if we are scaling up the strength of the signal x, well then this term will grow large and the variance here will grow down towards zero. And similarly, if we are taking the noise variance and put it to zero, well then the MSC becomes zero. So we see that if we are transmitting a strong signal x, or if the noise is weak, we have good conditions for estimating the channel g. The difference between g hat and g is known as the estimation error, and we are often writing it as g tilde. We have something called the orthogonality principle, which says that g hat, the estimate, and g tilde, the estimation error, are uncorrelated random variables. I think this property makes intuitive sense because if g tilde were correlated with estimate, then there is some shared information between them that we could have been utilizing to improve the estimate. So an estimator that is taking away all the correlation between the estimate and the estimation error should be a good one. In our example, g was Gaussian distributed and g hat was a scale version of y, which was our observation, which was also Gaussian distributed. And if we are taking the difference between them, we also get something that is Gaussian distributed. All of these variables are jointly Gaussian. And that also means that uncorrelation between g hat and g tilde means that the estimate and the estimation error is not only uncorrelated, they are also independent random variables. This is essentially only happening when we are trying to estimate the realization of a Gaussian random variable observed in Gaussian noise. But that is the case we are considering here, and it's something that is commonly appearing in wireless communication, so it is a very useful case. And since g tilde is Gaussian distributed, and we know that it has the mean squared error as its variance, we can write its random distribution like this. g is complex Gaussian, and have this MSE as its variance. Since g hat and g tilde are independent of each other, then the sum of them should have the same variance as the original variable g. So that means that g hat has a variance which is equal to the original variance of g, which is beta, minus the mean squared error. And if we are rearranging this expression, we can also get this form here. These two random distributions are useful in order to analyze the estimation error and the estimates in wireless communication without having to actually go through the process of generating y, scale it properly to get the estimate. Here we can directly generate random realizations of the estimate and the corresponding random realization of the estimation errors. In summary, there are many unknown parameters in wireless communications that we would like to learn the value of. And the ones that are challenging to estimate are those that are realizations of random variables, particularly when we get new realizations over time. Then we have a limited amount of observations that will be noisy, and we can make use of the statistics in order to develop good estimators. The minimum mean squared error estimator is the best one in terms of minimizing the mean squared error, which is a good performance metric for estimators. In this video, I have exemplified these properties and talked particularly about how to estimate the channel by sending a known signal and then look at the received signal and scale it properly to get the minimum mean squared error estimate.